What's up guys, CJ here, and welcome to another all-new episode of Origins, where we break down the history of your favorite movie, video game, and television characters on and off the screen. This week, in honor of the very first trailer for Sony's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse animated movie released on Friday, we'll be giving you a crash course on the origins of Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider-Man. And a quick programming note before we dive right in, Miles began his life over in the Marvel Universe's Earth 1610, the ultimate universe, but as of the last few years, he's made the move over to the main Marvel Earth 616 universe after the events of Secret Wars 2, but to be clear, we'll be exploring his origin from the ultimate universe. When our story found Miles, he was a relatively normal, nerdy teenager from Brooklyn. He was a bright kid, focused mainly on school, girls, and his friends, and specifically his best friend, Genki Lee. But Miles' life changed one day in a freak accident when he was visiting his uncle, Aaron Davis. Unbeknownst to Miles, Aaron was a skilled burglar who had just the night before broken into Oscorp. However, Aaron didn't know that during the robbery, a genetically enhanced spider had stowed away in his bag. When Miles visited Aaron the next day, the spider emerged from Aaron's bag and bit Miles, granting him powers similar to Spider-Man and several powers that even Spider-Man didn't have. But more on that later. Initially, Miles rejected these powers, choosing instead to remain a normal high schooler rather than a hero. He hid his powers from everyone but Genki, who noted the similarities between him and Spider-Man and disagreed with Miles' decision. Months passed, and Miles remained an anonymous high schooler, just as he intended. But then, tragedy struck. Peter Parker was killed fighting the Green Goblin before Miles could arrive to help, something that would haunt Miles for months afterwards. In honor of Peter's sacrifice, Miles decided he couldn't sit on the sidelines any longer, officially becoming a hero in Peter's memory. His early attempts didn't go so smoothly. First, he donned a Spider-Man Halloween costume and faced off with small-time thugs before being apprehended by Spider-Woman and S.H.I.E.L.D., only for them to give their approval when he helped the Ultimates take down Electro. Ever since, Miles has protected the streets of New York City as Spider-Man, with some brief exceptions. But after the events of Secret Wars, he and his friends and family were brought into the main Marvel Universe when it was put back together after being torn apart by God Emperor Doom. While Miles has spent most of his career being inexperienced and learning on the fly from ongoing situations or old YouTube videos of Peter Parker in action, he does bring a variety of potent abilities to the table. First and foremost, he has the spider-like powers of Peter Parker, more or less the proportionate physical abilities of a spider scaled up to his size. This is probably most evident in his strength and his speed, as Miles has the ability to lift more than 10 tons and is quicker and more agile than even peak human Olympic level athletes. He also has incredibly quick reflexes thanks to this, but when working in tandem with his precognitive spider sense, this gives him a tactical advantage in just about any situation as he can dodge many attacks with these multiple levels of advanced warning. But Miles also has abilities beyond those of Peter Parker. Most notable among these is his power to harness and channel his body's natural bioelectric energy, like Jessica Drew's Spider Woman, as he can incapacitate his enemies with a single touch and can even use it to enhance his punches. He also has a unique ability to camouflage himself and his clothes, blending into his surroundings so well that it resembles invisibility. Additionally, Miles has a regenerative healing factor, allowing him to heal at a rate far quicker than normal humans. But beyond that, he might actually be immortal, according to Norman Osborn, who claimed that the Oz formula, which enhanced the spider that bit him, granted immortality, something that Miles would be affected by in theory. And of course, Miles uses web shooters to swing around like a spider, just like Peter before him. Behind the scenes, Miles first appeared in Ultimate Comics Fallout number 4 in August of 2011, actually debuting after the death of Peter Parker, with the rest of his backstory filled in after the fact. He was the brainchild of writer Brian Michael Bendis, artist Sarah Pacelli, and former Marvel editor-in-chief Joe Quezada. And believe it or not, the character was inspired by two pretty radically unique sources, Barack Obama, who at that time had just been elected the first black US president, and actor Donald Glover, who had publicly campaigned to play Spider-Man in the movies that would become the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. His creation was not without controversy, though. Many fans were upset about the death of Ultimate Peter Parker and his replacement with Miles, and many initially felt like it was a move made solely out of political correctness. However, over the years, Miles has generally been well-reviewed by the public and critics alike, taking a backseat to other more controversial decisions in the Marvel Universe. Despite his popularity, Miles has yet to appear on the big screen, something that'll be changing this year with Sony's upcoming animated feature Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which stars Miles and will at least in part adapt his origin. 
As far as recommended reading goes, Ultimate Comics Fallout number 4 is a must-read for that first chapter of Miles' story, as well as Bendis' Ultimate Comics Spider-Man run, which was Miles' first solo title. As for recommended viewing, as I mentioned, the choices are pretty limited to the small screen and specifically animation. Even their options are still pretty limited, and while I personally didn't love the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series, to see him voiced by Donald Glover, the man that helped inspire his creation, is worth it alone. But that brings us to the end of this episode of Origins, and our primer on Miles Morales ahead of his animated movie releasing this year. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Let us know in the comment section down below who you'd like to see next, but that's gonna do it for me here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, subscribe for more great content every single day, and consider turning on your notifications to be alerted every time we upload a new video. For even more content, check out our website at hybridnetworkyt.com, and if you love HN and want to take your support to the next level, consider donating to us on Patreon as we strive to bring you the best content possible. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.